Thank you, Darwin. And uh, I know there was some confusion, Darwin, over your um, resume and Mike Breen's earlier. Uh, and while you gave a glowing resume and accomplishments of the great Mike Breen, um, you did fail to mention one of the things you did have in common, and that was your work on Love in the Wild. And I think, Mike, that was some of your best work. <laughs> it really was, and the fact that he left it out, I couldn't let that go. Uh, you know, Darwin mentioned I, I did get a chance that probably the highlight of my career came in the first two years as play-by-play -play guy for the Nets, and that was going to the NBA Finals. And I have done uh, many playoff games, over 100 playoff games. I've done the Olympics or NBC. Doing one-on-one -on -one is still, I think, the most enjoyable thing I've ever done on the air. Uh, when I did it, it was 11, the, the coveted time slot on Saturday, Sunday nights from 11 o'clock at night till 2 in the morning. <laughs> and, and all the, the, the upperclassmen used to remind us how Keating Hall was haunted. We've heard that one, right? So going to that little one room where it was back then on the third floor of Keating and leaving there at 2.30 in the morning on Saturdays and Sundays was always great. But what I think, you know, WFUV was called Fordham's Voice, right? Is that still the slogan we go by, Chuck? For so many of us that went there, one-on-one, -on -one, at least when I was there, you know, when you did games, there's a script that you stick to. Not that, not that you're scripted in play-by-play, -play, but you, the game is, is on and you're, and you're calling the action. What one-on-one -on -one did for scores of us who have gone on to become identifiable broadcasters with our own unique styles is one-on-one -on -one enabled us to really find our voice as broadcasters. Um, it, it wasn't just play-by-play, -play, call the action. It was discovering your on-air personality. And when you look at the guys who did it in that format, like Michael Kay and Mike Breen and Bob Papa, their play-by-play -play is infused with a sensibility. A lot of it is a New York sensibility. A sensibility that was cultivated on those late nights in the third floor of haunted Keating Hall in the Bronx. And it's entirely, and I speak for myself, um, the reason where I am today. I, I have to confess, Malcolm Moran, who is the godfather, and, and I went 88 to 92, Malcolm was the go-to halftime guest in basketball. Malcolm was one of the great college basketball writers at the time, was always hanging around Rose Hill Gym or in some other gym, and Malcolm always made time for the guys at one-on-one, -on -one. and we were like old school, because WFEV is like a fraternity. He was the godfather. It was like, Malcolm, here's the guy, one-on-one -on -one guy, it was Malcolm. So we, I appreciate what you did for everybody, but I've got a confession to make. You asked us to raise your hands. If Fordham, you know, WFEV was the reason you came to Fordham, I didn't know really the, the storied history of FUV at the time. But when I went to the radio station, the first day I was on campus, because I had this vision of being Tom Brokaw, it came time to sign up for a workshop, and you could do music, news, or sports. And I asked somebody, well, what did the sports department do? And they said, you know, the games, play-by-play, -play, and the show one-on-one. -on -one. And I immediately remembered back to being a young boy with my Sony Walkman on Sunday nights, in bed trying to go to sleep at midnight, listening to, I don't remember who, because Michael K wasn't Michael K. Mike Breen wasn't Mike Breen yet. Bob Papa wasn't Bob Papa yet. But I heard all those voices, and immediately, when I saw one-on-one -on -one in the workshop, it clicked, and I said, forget the news thing. No, 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 I'm going to do one-on-one. -on -one. And then I sat in one session with Marty Glickman, and my life was changed for the better. And I'm here because Malcolm Moran started one-on-one -on -one 40 years ago, and I know I speak for a lot of other people. So Bob Ahrens, I didn't get to work with you when I was at Fordham, but as Mike pointed out, we've all gotten to know you very well over the years. 
My Bob Aarons was Chris Madzkowski, who should be uh, pointed out too. Madge, one of the great engineers now in the business. So thank you, Madge. And on behalf of all the, the distinguished alumni who look out for each other, I ask one-on-one, -on -one, and whoever takes over, Bob, hopefully it's 20 years from now, remain on the cutting edge. When we did it, Sports Talk, there wasn't any. You guys have changed the format. You've really tapped into the creativity of your students. You draw from all over the country. Continue to do that. Thanks for having me, and uh, thank you very much for supporting one-on-one -on -one at WFUV. Thanks. <laughs>